Hi, it's me, it's Brian, it's been a while, I know, I'm sorry. No, I don't have an excuse. Yes, I should be uploading more, okay? Everyone's happy, we got this out of the way, can we, can we start the video? Awesome, because I just spent three weeks on a vacation in which I had to work a lot. And while planning my mobile rig and while working abroad, I learned a bunch of stuff that I can't wait to share with you. So let's jump right in. So after almost two years of no travel and not seeing my family, restrictions have loosened around the globe and I was finally able to book a flight to see my family again. So I jumped on the opportunity and made arrangements and book dates to have a three weeks vacation to see my family and get some much needed R&R. Unfortunately, life is what happens when you're busy making plans, and so these three weeks that I just planned happened to be during a huge time crunch at work. At the time, I was working on one short film, which is coming really soon, composing an animated TV show called Adventures of Ayuma, which you can check out on YouTube, another reality TV show, and an episode of Ninjago. So yeah, busy weeks. Luckily, while planning the trip, Apple just announced their new lines of MacBook Pros, and the release for those MacBook Pros were just two weeks before my flight, so I started planning. I knew that I needed something powerful, and I knew that my small composing template takes about 80 gigs of RAM before editing anything. Drop a like if you want me to make a video about my template, I'll be happy to make that video. Anyways, since the biggest RAM configuration you can get on one of those new MacBook Pros is 64 gigs, which is barely enough for me, I just had to go with that and make do with what I have. Secondly, I wanted the option to run small projects off of my laptop without connecting any external hard drive. So I went with two terabytes of storage, which covers most of my libraries, excluding some really big contract libraries, and my superior drum library because I have a lot of expansions because I really like programming drums. But that means all of Omnisphere with Trillion and Keyscape, all of my addictive drums and addictive keys, um, Nexus Synth, Battery Sampler, plus the core library, you get the point, a lot of stuff. Finally, the size. I've been lugging around my 15 inch 2016 MacBook Pro for all of my trips and it has been a pain to carry in bags and to set up in small spaces and it's overall just too big and too heavy. So once I knew that I can get the maxed out CPU configuration in both 14 and 16 inch, there was no question and I had to go with a 14 inch. And I gotta say that in my opinion, it's the perfect size. Keep in mind that this is my mobile rig and not my main computer since I have the Mac Pro in the studio. So if you are going to use this as your main machine and you produce a lot on the go and you appreciate a little bit of more screen real estate, definitely go with a 16 inch. However, just a fair warning, I have seen it in real life and it's, it's really big, it's huge. I was lucky enough that a very kind Apple representative was able to secure this exact specification in the color that I wanted, no less, on launch day and in store. But then came the scary part, compatibility. See, in my main machine in the Mac Pro in the studio, I'm running Catalina, so I never had any experience with Big Sur, not to mention Modern Ray. So I was a little nervous putting all of my faith in a brand spanking new operating system that nobody knew anything about. But I'm happy to say and was relieved to find out that 90% of my VST and plugins work at least in Cubase. Furthermore, if you follow me on Instagram, you probably already know, but I was surprised to find out that a huge project of a song that I just finished working on not only ran, but it actually ran better than it did on my $15,000 Mac Pro. Yeah. Yeah, there are some weird things like RC20 will load in Ableton without an interface and then in Cubase it runs no problem, but you know that these things will be sorted out in the upcoming months. Would I use this computer as my main machine? No, for various reasons. It doesn't have enough RAM, it doesn't have enough ports, some crucial plugins still don't work, but what I can say is that this is a fantastic computer and I wish I had more mobile gigs that I needed it for because it is really a treat to work on and I really love this computer. Okay, so I had the computer, it was mostly working, now I need to connect stuff to it, right? So I tried to imagine myself working in my parents' house and in friends' studio, and I tried to visualize what I needed to be plugged in. Obviously, an audio interface, iLock, that stupid Steinberg e-licensor thing that I'm so glad they're getting rid of, but I digress, um, a MIDI keyboard, MIDI CC faders, Stream Deck, maybe, um, and external hard drive, so that's seven ports. 
Luckily, I already had this uh, Belkin 4USB 3 port hub that I know that works perfectly. I'll have links in the description if you want to get this model. But that means I was only missing three more ports. Since I know Pluggable makes amazing hubs since I'm using two of them in my Mac Pro, I found this uh, three port USB hub from Pluggables with an Ethernet jack, which um, is a huge bonus. The reason that I really like these hubs is that they don't have a cable built in. And so all I have to find is a reliable USB type B to USB C cable for the Belkin and one of those big chunky weird ones for the pluggables. And then I'm set. And then if a cable breaks or dies on me, I can just replace the cable and I don't have a dead hub on my hand, which is something to consider. For hard drives, since all of my projects and samples and libraries are already in SSDs connected to the Mac Pro with the Blackmagic SSD dock, I wanted to find something similar just in a smaller form factor. Now we all know how unreliable hard drive docks can get, and since working remote is not something that I usually do, I didn't want to spend a ton of money on something like this, the Blackbird VX2 SSD, which is awesome, but kind of expensive, or it's bigger brother, this, the Blackjet TX4DS. So I found this 4SSD dock from Sabrent. It is USB 3.0 and not 3.1, which kind of sucks. However, it did have a lot of good reviews, and since it's not too expensive, it was definitely worth checking out since it's really small and affordable. In real usage, it worked really well, but I wouldn't use this for bigger project using a lot of contact libraries that are playing a lot of notes at the same time. For instance, I would record acoustic guitar to a project that was um, in one of the SSDs and I would work on it for a while and then every 10 minutes or so, the audio would drop and then come back. This is probably has to do with some um, USB 3.0 speed limitation. So it's not amazing, but it never disconnected on me, which is kind of big. And it's, it's probably plenty fast for most people. But if you need something mobile, reliable, and fast, maybe do go with a Blackjet on the Blackbird one um, and spend just a little bit more money on your SSD dock. Okay, I don't want to drag this video too long, so let's do a speed round of everything else that I took with me. For audio interface, I rented the Focusrite Scarlett Solo. It's a, it was a rental, so I already returned it. This is why I don't have it here, but I wanted something that is bus powered so I don't have to rely on multiple outlets so I can produce on the plane, for instance, which is something to consider. It has one microphone input and one instrument input, which is plenty for one I needed. Um, most of the time I was working with headphones. We'll get to that later, but it's small. It fits perfectly into the backpack. It does the job. It sounds good. I highly recommend it. For MIDI keyboard, I actually use this Akai MPK25 that I already had from a previous trip. It's okay. Most of the time I was plugged into a friend's 88 key keyboard in his studio, which was terrible for a different reason that I'm not going to go into right now. But when I needed to lay anything super quick, it did the job. Maybe try and find something like the Native Instruments one because it has more feature and you get some software with it. Um, but if you're on a budget, really good. Stream Deck. Um, I did take my Stream Deck XL that is right there um, without its fancy stand, but surprisingly, I didn't plug it in even once. For shortcuts and fast menu triggering, I used an app called Paletro or Paletro for Mac. I'll have a link in the description. It is a lifesaver. I'll probably make a video about it pretty soon. For other more complex keyboard maestro stuff that I needed, I just used the keyboard maestro search function and that worked perfectly. For headphones, since I knew that I was going to be mobile, I wanted a really good monitoring headphones that won't break the bank. Since my main monitors in the studio are the Neumann KH310s, I decided to stay with the brand and I rented the Neumann NDH20 headphones. They are really great. Since they're closed back headphones, they block out most of the outside noise, which was a priority for me since I was working in different places in different scenarios. And they're relatively flat sounding, which is always a plus. I would appreciate a little bit more bass out of them, but it's not like a deal breaker or anything. And over time, I found them to be just a little bit uncomfortable right at the top of the head, but I'm talking about like five hours of continuous working without breaks. Yes, we go hard. For MIDI CC faders, I took the Monogram CC with the three fader extension and I never plugged it in. It is great and I love it and I use it as my main faders in my studio, just the opportunity never arrived since um, if I was working on anything really big, 
I was uh, doing it on my friend's computer and he has a bigger setup, so I never used them. But these are great faders and I highly recommend them and they fit perfectly in my bag. Speaking of which, the bag. Well, I really wanted a nomadic backpack because of course you want a nomadic backpack. They're, they're awesome and everybody uses them. After buying the laptop and renting the audio interface and the headphones and buying the SSD dock, my budget was starting to run a little low. And so I ended up going with this Thule Crossover 2 backpack that I found on a special discount for 200 Canadian dollars, which is around um, 150 US, which is a great price for it. Um, it's extremely roomy for all of the accessories and most of the things that I needed, plus um, my BagSmart um, cable management thing, which is awesome. I'll have links in the description. Um, it is stupid rugged. I was actually uh, lucky enough to sit in an exit row on the airplane and so I used it the entire flight as an ottoman to put my legs on and it kept its shape. It's awesome. They really do like outdoorsy stuff so you know their stuff are going to be good. Not sponsored. This is a great backpack. Highly recommend it. I'll have links to everything in the description below. Overall, I am super pleased with my mobile rig, and I can't believe that I'm saying this, but I can't wait for the next time that I have to work outside my studio. If, if you know me, you know that I love my little setup and my little cave that I built for myself, and I never want to leave this place, but after going on this vacation and working remotely and building this setup and working with it, I, it was such a pleasure that I actually am looking forward for the next time that I'm going to work outside the studio, which is actually coming up on April. I can't tell you about this project yet, but once it actually happens, I'll make a video about it and who knows what I'll learn about working remotely and what is necessary for a good mobile rig and what is not necessary. But what I can tell you right now is that if you are about to take on a gig on a remote location or you just need a mobile setup, I would highly recommend first talking to a friend that already has a mobile setup and just listen to what they have and how they use it. This was probably the best thing that I did while planning my mobile setup. Even though my friend's setup was completely different from what I needed, it helped me realize what's important to me and what was just me being greedy. Next, like I mentioned, try to literally close your eyes and visualize yourself sitting down in the studio or in front of the desk and working on a project, recording guitars, tracking vocals, making a beat, coming up with melodies, whatever the job requires. Maybe you need plug-in reliability and you can't risk running Mac OS Monterey. So this 2021 MacBook Pro isn't the one for you. This is something to consider. You'll be surprised how many things you left out because you were staring at this fancy laptop stand that you don't actually need. This, this happened to a, a friend of mine. <laughs> And before you know it, you have a great mobile setup that serves you and you'll be happy producing anywhere in the world. So yeah, that's the video. I hope that you enjoyed it and I was able to help you figure out how to best spend your hard earned cash. I hope to start making more videos more regularly because it's about damn time. Like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff and follow me on the socials because I'm uploading other awesome content that I'm sure that you're going to love over there as well. And of course, stay creative, stay awesome. I'll see you in the next one.